Good afternoon, St. Mary's. It is Tom. Sorry for the trucks in the background. I just opened that door and uh, the breeze is coming through. Uh, but so, yes, I just uh, wanted to come back. I'm a little different than last time you saw me. I've got a new, it's like I'm a new man every week, uh, which is just kind of uh, a strange experience. <laughs> so, uh, but it's been good. It's awesome. Perfect timing because as soon as I, I shaved it all off, I got back and it was like 90. So like walking through the breeze is awesome. So I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, cut all your hair off. But if you're planning on doing it anyways, uh, it's a good experience. So uh, so cool. So I still have a little piece of purple in there. So I was hoping that would go away, but it's not away. So I just kind of look like a like a stranger, but uh, it gives me an opportunity to evangelize uh, potentially. So that's kind of a cool thing too. Uh, and people think it's funny. So what the heck? Uh, so today we are going to be talking about, we're going to be continuing uh, a couple weeks ago, we stopped on the sixth commandment and there's just like a boatload there. So it'll, it'll take some time. Um, but I want to mention that uh, today is the day for fasting and for prayer for um, for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. For me, it's unbelievable. I mean, I was absolutely amazed that this is like becoming a reality. I'm I am just shocked, shocked, shocked. But it's just like super awesome, and it goes to show you like the power of prayer. You know, like um, uh, how many how many prayers have been said, how much hard work has gone into it. Unbelievable amounts, but. Um, but uh, I was thinking that the, 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 the time that this would happen wouldn't be now, you know? So it's kind of amazing that it is the case. But uh, regardless, let's keep praying and fasting because there's still a lot of work to be done uh, in, that, in that direction to protect the unborn. So, so yeah, keep them, uh, keep them in your prayers uh, and, and persevere in fasting. Fasting is awesome, by the way, uh, even though it's, it's tough. Um, I, I, I'll just explain fasting. Fasting is like, I, I love it. Like it's, oh my goodness. I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you. Like, it's just amazing. So I'll, I'll explain it to you next week. Uh, but I wanted to talk about, uh, the sixth commandment just partially here. Uh, and again, there's a lot there, but I think that, um, the church is teaching on homosexuality, contraception, in vitro fertilization, uh, sex outside of marriage, like all that stuff is extremely relevant, you know, in our lives right now and in our kids' lives, right? I don't have any kids, but, um, but you probably do. So it's, it's significant that we talk about it. Why does the church like have such a crazy strict teaching on this? There's only one circumstance where uh, sex is acceptable and it's within the context of a married man and a married woman to one another, right? Not to other people. Uh, so, uh, so breaking that down, like, like, what is the point of that? Why is it so intense? And the reason is pretty simple. Um, but then there's a theological reason that actually makes a lot of sense. I'll start with the theological one and then we can go back to the other one later. Uh, but theologically, it's actually kind of cool. I remember hearing this, um, that, um, uh, that it really is the, the the marital act is really a replication of who God is, right? So if you look at the Trinity, you have the Father that existed for all of time. You have the Son, which is eternally begotten. So he's been begotten. So he like like how do I explain? So a begotten. The word begotten means like we as uh, human beings, we don't make people, we beget, okay? So a father begets a son or a mother begets her child, right? The father begets the son for all eternity, right? There's not a moment where that's not happening. And then the love between them is so intense that a, a, a third being is actually formed. And we call the love between the father and the son, the Holy Spirit, okay? So that's what that is. That's the Trinity, which is amazing. Um, so uh, where else do we see that in uh, in our world? Like where else is that image laid out in reality? I'll give you two seconds. Time's up. In a marriage, right? A mother and a father love each other so much that a third being is formed. So it's actually it's actually pretty amazing. Uh, and and so in God's eyes, it's actually it's actually something sacred, right? So it replicates him. It represents who he is, right? So the marital act is uh, it's a huge deal, right? It's like it's. And I like to use this example. Nobody would approve of me taking the Mona Lisa and using it as as 
toilet paper or using it as a Kleenex to blow my nose with, right? Like something so beautiful, consider like humanity considers it, you know, one of the greatest works of art of all of all of all time. Um, and then just being used for something that it's not supposed to be used for, right? Like this is for the for, for the purpose of forming eternal souls, souls that are going to last for eternity, right? And so when the church is teaching, like when they teach about like okay, this is why it's structured this way, uh, it's super significant, right? Like having a um, having a uh, a family structure which is going to help this family towards salvation or help this child come towards salvation. We're dealing with eternal souls, right? We're dealing with life and death when when we're talking about the marital act. It's the most beautiful gift that God's given us. The power to create something which is going to last for eternity, right? So like, of course, there's going to be guidelines there and like pretty strict ones because it's a very intense reality. Uh, and if we just throw that to the wind, great damage has been done because we just don't follow those rules. More than, I think it's been over a billion people have been aborted since Roe versus Wade. Un I mean, like that is more than every single war in America, like World War One, World War Two, the Civil War, everything combined. Right? That's how many. Um, that's how many people we have lost to uh, to abortion. So it's just this tremendous. And, and and we don't follow the rules. Like this is what happens. Right? Tra tragedy. And so, um, so yeah, so that is kind of the reason that the church is so strict on it. What about homosexuality, for example? Because um, a lot of times people say, well, that's not like doing damage to anybody. Um, in a sense, it goes back to what we were saying earlier with uh, the replication of the Trinity, right? So it's supposed to be used in a particular context for the procreation of, of human beings, right? So that, that, that marital act is something sacred, right? It's something holy, and God actually participates in it, right? So the parents are the one that give the physical matter. God breathes the soul into the human being at the moment of conception, right? So as soon as conception takes place, God is present and places the soul into that being, right? So God is also present during that act. So it actually brings God into, into the picture. So Keeping in mind that um, something holy isn't supposed to be used uh, just in whatever way that we want to, right? There's a particular way um, that, like, we wouldn't go and like grab the chalice from the from the uh, sacristy and just use it at a banquet, right? Uh, actually, they did that in the Old Testament, and the guy got—I uh, think he was killed. Um, you know, and there was like a writing on the wall, and God was like said that it was displeased or something like that. If you remember that story, anyways. Uh, so that kind of goes to it. Um, now, I think I just want to share one last story. So I have a, I had a few friends when I was working back in the city of Chicago, I was working at a restaurant. And uh, most of those people had same-sex attractions, right? Most of them. Uh, and so like, what was my role as a Catholic in that situation? You know, people immediately found out I was Catholic and they like, for the first couple of days, they kind of, you know, stayed back, right? They're kind of, uh, afraid in a sense, right? Because they knew what the Catholic Church teaches. And, um, but it was really awesome because I think a lot of us know people in this situation. How do you treat them? Absolute perfect love, absolute love. You just like shower them with kindness, right? You just literally like give them as much as you possibly can to these people particularly. Because I got to know them and I heard their backstory and they have experienced boatloads of rejection. Tons of it from their family members. Some of them were disowned, this, that, and the next thing. Just like the amount of pain they've experienced. So if we don't love them, like we're doing unbelievable amounts of damage. And I still stay in contact with one of them. One of them actually came to my RCAA class and uh, it was awesome. Uh, the class was kind of, kind of fell apart. The computer wasn't working. But the fact that he came just goes to show you that like, like, yeah, we, like, as Catholics, we are first and foremost called to love the heck out of these people more than anybody else, right? Uh, and then through that love, they'll taste God. They'll taste, uh, you know, what it means to be accepted and how God actually, like, looks at these people. Yes, like, they're not supposed to act on it. Um, and, but yes, their life will be very challenging. You know, they call, they're called, if they choose to live the celibate life, they're going to be saints, right? They'll be higher than every single one of us. I can almost promise you that if they stay faithful. Uh, so, but it's very challenging, right? And they need love to make it through. Uh, so that's our job. 
were called to love them. And eventually I didn't even bring it up. They would come to me and they'd ask me like, well, what's your understanding of, of same sex marriage or whatever? And I'd be able to tell them, but just like in a kind, loving way, just say, Hey, what I just explained to you, that's what I explained to them. So, um, so yeah, keeping that in mind, if you have any questions, come to me. I don't have all the answers, but, uh, it's good to talk about. So, okay. We're over 10 minutes. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day and have a great weekend. All right. Bye-bye.